Hello from Yerushalayim, Jerusalem, the holy city. We'd like to help everybody feel a little bit more closer to the idea of what's prayer about. And to introduce this little schmooze, there's a story about Mrs. Goldwasser. She would go out every morning on her porch, raise her hands to heaven and saying, thank you, thank you, Hashem, for this wonderful life and this beautiful world. I'm so grateful and everything. And she would do this every morning. A guy across the way also had a porch. He could see her doing this. And he was really very uh, disappointed or annoyed by her religious religiosity. And he decided that he, that this lady is too religious for him. So what, what did he do? Well, he kept telling her, lady, you don't realize you're wasting your time. Nothing's going to happen with your prayers, nothing. Then it happened in the winter time. there was a great big, big storm. And the lady was uh, unable to go out to buy her, her food. So she went to the porch and she said, Hashem, please provide me food. Please provide me food. I'm getting, I need food to survive. So this fellow, he had a trick he wanted to play. So he went out in the snow and got some food and put it at her door. She happened to open the door and she saw the food and she was so grateful. She went to the porch and said, thank you, Shem, for the food. And then this guy across the way said, ah, you see, you're foolish. I'm the one that brought the food, not God. I'm the one that brought the food. So then Mrs. Goldwasser put her hands up to heaven. Shem, thank you for making this guy bring the food to me. This is what prayer is about, right? We, we have somebody out there who cares. And you want to have a relationship with them? Depends on you. Because basically, it's part of life. You didn't get here accidentally. There's somebody there. So he's a whole creating this world was to build a possibility for you to have a relationship with the thing that makes it go. So it's up to you to figure out how to, how to make that happen. If you want it. You don't want it, it's your choice. If you do want it, you can have an excellent opportunity to connect to the thing that's really real about life. Because everything otherwise is just here today and gone tomorrow. The infinite is forever. And you... When you attach to yourself to this force, you take of that potential to be forever, forever because you're actually connecting to this forever in what you're saying. In fact, that's why we have needs all the time. So I want you to know that I'm with you. I'm, I'm part of your life. And when you see that you need help, then you pray. You get close. The, the truth is, it's a, a very simple uh, model of how to get life to happen. There's three major principles of life. There's a creator that loves us. There's an ultimate purpose to life. There's a means to get there. This is what I call the cosmic bagel. Two big circles. What, I say one big circle and then a little circle in the middle and then a ladder connecting the two. So we get up in the morning and we thank Hashem for giving us a new life. That's the Shachwe's prayer that Abraham gave us. In the afternoon we were busy making uh, our livelihood and preoccupied with the finite world, we stop and we connect it again to the infinite, which is really the purpose, to connect the finite to the infinite. And then at night when we come home, that was from Mincha. Now at night we come home, we have Marev, and this is a chance to spend the extra time we have to learn Torah, to get closer, to understand more about life. Because really it's an endless fine-tuning of how we can make ourselves more worthy of, of that connection to something greater. And it's an ongoing life experience to see how it is that you take the challenges that come to you and you deal with them and you grow from them. The whole point of you start as a child and you become an adolescent and an adult and you get older, what are you now different than when you started out? Dependent on all the factors around you? We all are, of course, but then when you get ready to move on and show your connection to something that's really solid, this is the achievement of a life that has, saw, has seen that life is really a preparation for another, another side beyond this world. And this is what the connection to the infinite will, will help you do. There's a, a famous non-Jew, uh, his name is um, Reinhold Norber. He was an uh, American uh, clergyman, and he has a very famous serenity prayer. Serenity prayer is known else in the world in general. And I was fascinated to see that this is the same system that we just said before. The prayer goes like this. God, please give me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change. 
and the courage to change the things that I can change, and the wisdom to know the difference. Serenity, courage, and wisdom. Serenity comes from understanding that someone there that loves me and has put me in the situation I'm in for me to do my thing, to grow and become connected to something beyond, because that's the relationship that it's, that's offered to us, that we want it. If you don't want it, that's your choice. But this is a relationship that makes life worth living, because it gives you an ultimate purpose. And that, to have the courage to step out and really be the one who's going to connect to something more is not easy because most people take the, the position that they can do whatever they want. But you have to have the courage to connect to something greater than this world, not just preoccupied all the time with the activities in this dimension, but seeing how there's ways to connect this world. Like for example, Shabbos, the day where you can connect to much more. And this is really the, the secret of, uh, of the Jewish people, that we have ways to realize that there's much more to connect. Now, uh, then, the wisdom to know what, what I'm supposed to do and how I am supposed to accept what I cannot change, this is continually learning how life unfolds for you and, how, and get the advice from your rabbi, from your friends, from your, your parents as well, everybody, what is it I'm here to get done and how can I achieve my ultimate, ultimate success? which is not a simple thing. And we have a lot of work to do throughout our lives to, to better ourselves. The prayer gives us a day, or in the day, the chance to focus and try to make ourselves more capable of achieving our ultimate mission in life to connect to something greater. Now, this is really the whole point of this, uh, this, uh, this, this, uh, these classes that are being given in, in honor of Avram ben Pauline. Uh, the idea is that uh, that soul is now being elevated because we are giving it more uh, credit that we, on its honor, we're trying to bring more Torah in the world. And this, this is really uh, the, 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 the secret of being here. We realize that there's much more to life than meets the eye. There's something beyond this world. There's an infinite creator and we have an infinite purpose to connect to it. That relationship is the basic to the whole of, of life. And the fact that the Jewish people are still here we are still on the map, shows that there's an ultimate purpose that one people are living and continue to live continually forever and ever. Because we're trying to prove to the world there is an ultimate purpose and our very existence as Jews today is a proof of that. We are the, the reason for the world to be here, to teach the world, yes, there's much more to life than meets the eye. Now, there's a cute expression that comes out that will explain this just as well. It, it says we're supposed to pray as if everything depends on, on the Creator. And we're supposed to act as if everything depends on us. I don't get it. It, it, it depends on Him, then wh wh where, where are we in the picture? So the idea that is that ultimately He's in total control of the Creator. So we have to realize that He's the boss all the time. But then what's our position? Our position is to contribute and to improve the world in the ways that we are capable of, which can mean many ways. Everyone's different. To make a better world is, is, is the goal. Better relationships, better, better, better concern for others, a, a better, more peaceful environment, a, a world where, where, where everyone can live in joy and happiness, bringing happiness and, and love in the world. That's, that's our goal. That's what's left for us to do. He's in charge, but we have to do our part to make it happen in the world at large. That's why this, this whole effort here to give um, uh, a unity to the Jewish people by everyone after this little schmooze saying the whole book of Tehillim together in a, in a virtual reality of, 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 of everyone chipping in to say his one chapter and everyone together completing the book of, of Psalms which is the whole emotional connection to the infinite that King David and others wrote to prove that the Jewish people, we've been saying these Psalms all throughout history, and we still say them. It's the most popular book in the whole world. Everybody, many, many people, Jews, non-Jews as well. The whole idea is to open up your heart to the fact that there's somebody out there who wants to help you if you will ask for help, and then do your best, that's the bottom line, and he'll take care of the rest because he's in total control. We can do only what we can do. Obviously, uh, 
we, we have limitations, human beings have limitations. That's why all the time we're praying for the Mashiach. He's supposed to be such an amazing person that he can go past all human limitations and get things done that most of us cannot do. It doesn't matter that we are limited. We are doing our best, and then we're praying for the one who really gets the job done. And all of us doing our best in a certain way is, is a combination of the Jewish people with the mission to bring the, the Mashiach from the world. We're all working together to do that. That would end up that when we've done our job, really, and that's why every Jew is important. Every person is part of the game. Every person can be integrated into the combined effort of the Jewish people. And this is a lovely idea to have everyone saying to Hillam, realizing as a team, we are amazing. We can do amazing things together. And this is what's so special about the Jewish people today. We have ourselves back in our capital, Yushalayim. We feel that central uh, location that bonds us all together, particularly at the Kotel, the Western Wall. This makes us feel like we're back in gear as a, as a nation. All this politics and all the other talk that they have, it's not, this is just the background to the real issue of the Jewish people combining their efforts, be, being a people that working together, bringing the good into the world as a team. So we should also be very grateful that we have this opportunity to do it now and saying this to Hillam together, because in effect, when Hashem sees that we're unified, then he can bring in his unification in the world, meaning it depends on the Jewish people loving each other, and then he will come in loving us and helping us to, even more to get the job done. It's, it's all in the hands of heaven, except for realizing that we are the ones to accept that he's in charge and then do what he asks us to do to build the world the way it's supposed to be. And we will do the best and Hashem will bring the Mashiach soon to complete the job. Shalom from Yushalayim. Shalom meaning peace and harmony and completeness, which is really the whole goal of our, our life as Jews to connect to, to, to Hashem, to the Creator, and to each other and build a world of peace and harmony for the whole world. With God's help, we will have it soon. And keep, keep working the hardest and best you can all the time. Shalom from Yushalayim.